Hello, welcome to Rising. I'm Robbie Suave, joined by Jessica Burbank to react to the first half of the Trump-Harris debate, which is taking place. There's already plenty of stuff to get into. And Jessica, I don't know about you. For me, the headline so far has been the moderators, which I'm going to have a lot of critical things to say about this time around. They've been very active um, fact-checking or attempting to fact-check Donald Trump, which I can see on social media is irritating a whole lot of people on the right, feeling that it is not equal whatsoever, that it's just focused on Donald Trump. In fact, there's been times where Kamala Harris has almost disappeared from the debate because it's just Trump being combative with the moderators. That's not what happened in the CNN debate with Joe Biden, uh, where they basically just asked them both questions and you didn't have that kind of thing. Here it's aggressive. That's what's going to be talked about on the right tomorrow. Um, what, what's your reaction so far? Yeah, I think if they want moderators that are not going to have to interject and correct the record on what's true, they should just find a candidate who doesn't lie constantly. He said he actually won the election in 2020 and the evidence is there. He said walls is for the post-birth execution of babies. He talked about post-term abortions after nine months and after birth happening. That doesn't happen in the United States. They had to correct the record on that. Um, he's saying people don't go to Kamala Harris's rallies and she's bussing them in from other states because no one would want to go otherwise. He talked about dogs being eaten in Springfield. That's a story we debunked earlier on the show today. Well, and he got that wrong, actually, because the allegation was not that they were eating dogs, but that they were eating cats, which prompted all of the cat memes on social media. Of course, the actual yeah. truth also is that, no there is evidence not, to that there is not an allegation of a cat being eaten by a Haitian immigrant. What the residents right. of the town were complaining about is um, wildlife ducks being uh, killed by the immigrants. And there are you know, reports of people saying that, not eating people's pets. So he, he didn't, didn't pay attention to the meme enough. Yeah, I guess not. He talked about the FBI reporting that crime is down, that that's actually wrong and not factual. He talked about the fact that he believes the president and vice president can sign bills into law without Congress. So he said a lot of things that are just plainly not true. Uh, he's defected to answering with the same old playbook on tariffs. He says China will pay for them rather than the American people. Same playbook saying Mexico is going to pay for the wall. And so we're seeing him running 2016 over again when it didn't work when he ran it over again in 2020. Yeah, but what I want to know is why, and that's all fine, and that's Kamala's job to call that out and to correct him if he's exaggerating or saying things wrong. But the moderators are helping her tremendously. She was not really pushed on. I mean, I, I am very against tariffs. I think Trump's tariffs are a bad policy. I think Biden's continuation of the tariffs was a bad policy. And she kind of got asked about that, and she didn't answer that at all. Well, what, well, you're criticizing his economic plan, but isn't there tremendous amounts of, of uh, continuity on that? I did want to bring up something she alluded to very early on that I, a lot of people described as acknowledgement of the lab leak theory. So here's the exact quote of what she said. She said, talking about COVID and China, that Donald, what Donald Trump did, let's talk about this with COVID, is he actually thanked President Xi for what he did during COVID. Look at his tweet. Thank you, President Xi, exclamation point. When we know that Xi was responsible for not giving us transparency about the origins of COVID. Now, that could, I guess, just be transparency about wet market or that kind of thing. But uh, I, a lot of, I, I saw RFK Jr., for instance, on, on Twitter, interpreting that as a, an ode to the lab leak, which showing if if that's what she meant, we've come a long way in this discourse that now the Democratic presidential candidate is um, is also talking about it. Right. I will say the moderators are journalists. They have a duty to their viewers to ensure that the truth is said on the channel. What stood out to me the most is the conversation around abortion. You had Kamala Harris talking about in detail what women are going through thanks to the abortion bans that went into effect after Roe v. Wade was overturned, thanks to the Trump appointed Supreme Court justices. She did a very good job detailing that there are women who are struggling with miscarriages who have to bleed out in waiting rooms because doctors are afraid to operate because they they don't know if the procedure that's required will be considered an unlawful abortion. When asked if he would be someone who uh, wouldn't sign a federal ban, he was actually uh, asked about J.D. Vance, who said he would sign it, even though Trump is saying, you know, he wouldn't sign something like that. Nothing like that would ever come before his desk. He says he never talked to his own vice presidential pick about that. So if Donald Trump, for whatever reason, isn't able to serve in office, we will have someone in office who will sign a ban. 
He had no answer for Kamala Harris talking about people leaving his rallies early and him having no vision for America spoken to at these rallies that is just all about himself and fictional characters that I think really got under his skin. Um, She said they leave early from exhaustion and boredom and he didn't like that. He also wasn't able to answer on how he killed the bipartisan border bill. He was directly asked about why he decided to torpedo that piece of legislation when Kamala Harris accurately pointed out that he chose to run on the issue of immigration sure. instead of do something about yeah, he it. Didn't, he didn't address that at all. She didn't address uh, what she was asked about it, her flip-flopping on a variety of issues. She said she was going, going to, but then she didn't really. And look, I, I, I don't agree that it's the moderator's job. to. I don't think they should be engaged in nearly as much fact-checking as they're doing because it's coming out totally biased that Donald Trump has to debate three people at once and the moderators have tremendous power to you know when, as soon as he stops speaking they go and you know we just have to correct because that wasn't true and they say that they're not doing that to Kamala Harris I, I think the hands-off approach that for instance Jake Tapper and Dana Bash took during the first debate was far superior um, to to what we're witnessing here and there's going to be inc- but it's it's having an effect I, I agree that it's it's working to hurt Trump he has been somewhat rattled so far um, Kamala has lured him into a couple um, I don't know, areas of discussion that are not particularly productive for Trump, talking about, yes, for instance, the rallies and that kind of thing, uh, talking, having him talk about his business record and that kind of stuff. We're way past that. He needs to be hitting how the policies of the Biden administration have failed the country on the economy, on immigration, how Harris is a part of those policies. Turn it back on that at every time. And he's allowed her to draw him into some less favorable territory. They spent a whole lot of time on abortion. Again, I, it, the moderators are the moderators are really doing Kamala a lot of favors, I have to say. Um, uh, and it's uh, and it's it's showing. And the betting markets right now uh, are not uh, not not too high on Trump's uh, 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 chances to win this debate. Yeah, I think a big reason for that is we really haven't heard a solid answer on what his vision is policy-wise for the country. Uh, He's busy lying about things that have happened in the past instead of speaking about what his policy plan is, what he will do to address the issues he's asked about. And so what we have is, yes, he's lying a lot. Kamala Harris isn't getting fact-checked by the moderators because she doesn't have a loose interpretation of the truth. She's not up there lying like he is. But he definitely, I would agree, is taking the bait. It's like when you're fishing, there's uh, sunnies, which are something that will just bite at anything that yeah, flashes. I, I, I that is I, Donald Trump tonight, absolutely. Yes. Do you think probably Kamala Harris got under his skin a little bit with some of these questions? What's that? I, I do, think do think she's got under her skin, yes. Yeah, I, yeah, I do think Yeah, I think has. that but I, I, part of that I, is he's willing to take the bait. For whatever she throws out, uh, he's responding to absolutely everything that she says, every little comment, instead of, you know, talking about his policies. And I think that that makes this debate so far, at least for me, definitely a loss for Donald Trump. I mean, she's absolutely repeated, you know, she accused him of, of calling the neo-Nazis very fine people, something that Snopes um, has debunked, for instance, that he didn't, that's not what he said. Moderators didn't jump on her to correct her there. They haven't jumped on her about anything. In fact, they didn't, when she said she was going to explain why she changed her mind about fracking and then didn't, they didn't care. So I, I, it's got to either be, in, in fact, I, I don't really want them to do that. I think it's the candidate's job to cross-examine each other in the way that Trump did so skillfully of Biden in the first debate and Biden was incapable of doing because he's no longer cognitively fit to be in this kind of uh, What uh, was the lie in the contest. answer about fracking? What did she lie about in that response? She did, she did not, she said she would explain all of these alleged flip-flops, and then she just said, she said she's not for banning fracking, but she was for it in the past. So she didn't, she she was asked to explain whether she counts this as a flip-flop or change of her opinion, and she said she would do all of that, and then she didn't. She just said she doesn't have that opinion anymore. Yeah, she said she believes in a transition to renewable energy, and her values on that haven't changed. That was her approach to get to a place of renewable energy when she ran the first time around and was on her website in 2019. And she said now, you know, she's in Pennsylvania, she's vice president, she hasn't banned fracking, but she still believes in a transition. So her values are the same, that we need to get to a more sustainable place when it comes to where we're getting our energy from. Uh, her values are the same, but her policy approach has changed. So I, th- I think she sufficiently answered that. It is true that she hasn't banned fracking as president. In fact, she explained this under the Inflation Reduction Act and a lot of the post-COVID 
with policy and economic stimulus bills, uh, they actually approved new permits for fracking under the Kamala Harris administration. She was the tie-breaking vote for that piece of legislation. So it is true that it was on her policy plan, but I, I think she sufficiently answered that question and definitely did so without lying. What I'm looking for uh, from Trump is just I'm keeping a tally of how many things he lies about because it's getting a little bit entertaining. I would like some description of what his policy plan is. This is leaving a void for Project 2025 to, I think, fill the blank because he's not painting a vision or even talking about Agenda 47 tonight. Hmm. Well, we'll be back with more analysis of the rest of the debate coming up soon.